This is the Tech Start Podcast. Tech professionals, remote workers, and entrepreneurs who are leaving the rat race and starting a new life in Southern Colorado. Now today's host, Ashley Arnold. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining the Upper Arkansas Technology Partnership Podcast. We're glad to be joined by Ian Sturgeon today, who is the owner of Double Under Wonder, an e-commerce um, jump rope website. Today we're going to be interviewing Ian about his lifestyle and we're going to be talking a bit about what it's like to have a technology um, enabled company here in uh, Canyon City in Fremont County. So um, welcome Ian. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where do you live? What do you do? What are your hobbies? Yeah, so I live in Canyon City, Colorado. I've lived here off and on since 1997. Um, I live in the country, but I only live seven minutes from my office, um, which is kind of a crazy thing, but, uh, but this town allows me to do that. Um, and then I've, I've got all kinds of different, different hobbies. I'm the sort of person that like when I get into something, I get all into it. So, um, I snowboard, I, um, I got into snow kiting a few years ago. I, I CrossFit. Really, I mean, I have a lot of, of different hobbies. I, I volunteered to do a century ride, which is dumb because I'm not a good cyclist. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got, I've got lots of hobbies, and um, this, this town allows me to do, do a lot of them and, uh, and live where I want to live. So. so you're an extreme sports athlete. That's what I'll go ahead and call you. Oh, gosh, that's flattering, but uh, I don't know, and I don't know how fitting that is. But, yeah, sure, great. Well, it's okay if you're out doing it. That's pretty much if you're out finding adventure, that makes you an adventurer. So there you go. Um, that's what we, we call that. Now, having said that, that's an interesting factor. The first one I've interviewed who's kind of about adventure um, and kind of living up here. So when you made the decision to move to Canyon in 97, was that decision based on your adventure side or your work side? Or was it life first and then a career or vice versa? And so when I moved in out here in 1997, it was um, to go to college and I had a really cheap place to live here because my wife's family lives here. Um, so that's that was the motivation um, when we first moved here. And honestly, I didn't I didn't realize how cool Canyon City was even living here for the first couple of years because I wasn't really into outdoor sports at the time or anything like that. I just kind of worked and, um, you know. And I was a college student, so worked and played and, you know, all that. And then uh, after moving to Denver and then um, a few years later moving to Dallas, man, I really like I I could really understand what I what uh, an awesome thing it was to live in our town. So. Yeah, you know, I find that I find that quite a bit. Um, I was saying this when we interviewed Stephanie Amend. Um, you know, being able to travel and then coming back here, and constantly changing that lens, kind of going. I, I've been in California for a couple of days and then come home, and then I've been in, you know, Texas and, and come home after a couple of days. There's nothing like coming home to. Well, in my case, it's the valley, right? Uh, but mm-hmm. but same area, same 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 reasons to be here, right? It's just breathtaking. And it's like, you can finally take a deep breath. In fact, I get altitude sickness when I go down um, to sea level and I can't breathe till I come home. Yeah. Well, there's, I've uh, run some five Ks at at sea level and I thought, oh man, I'm going to crush this. And then the air is so thick. You just want to (laughs) die. It's so thick. There's nothing like the air here. I think we're the ones that are clear headed. (laughs) Anyway, okay, so um, having said that, so it sounds like you do a lot of competition and, and everything, and your family's up here as well. So um, let me ask you this. Uh, I have to ask this question because Brad makes me, but what is the weirdest food you've ever eaten? Weirdest food I've ever eaten. Okay, here, uh, I'll tell you the, the weirdest thing I've ever eaten, and it's actually kind of unfortunate. Um, that would be a broken piece of glass um, on accident. I was, uh, I was actually at Disneyland, and actually, I didn't actually eat it, but I, I chewed it up. And that's, that's the first thing that popped into my mind, um, and it was like... I was really thankful that I didn't actually ingest it. Yeah. Did you have visions of like, like it just like cutting you all the way down from like your esophagus down to your stomach and stuff? Uh, oh man, I just I am so thankful that I didn't actually swallow it. And then the the restaurant was like, oh, we'll give you free drinks and all this stuff. And I'm like, that doesn't matter. Like, I, I can't unfeel that. Yeah. <laughs> 
I cannot unfeel that terror. Okay. I mean, I was I was nice about it, but it was it was scary. You, so. I think you definitely just moved to first place on the weirdest food situation. <laughs> okay, so Ian, why don't you tell me a little bit about the business you started? You you own this, right? Do you do you just start Double Under Wonder? Yep. So I started Double Under Wonder. Um, and on April 15th of 2015. Um, so we've been around for a little over three years and, um, it's been fun. It's been a roller coaster ride and I've learned a lot and, um, made plenty of mistakes, but, uh, we're, we're doing good and continuing to grow and, um, having a lot of fun with it. So, so for the, for the purpose of, um, our audience, why don't you just give a high level overview of what, what you do at double under wonder? Um, you know, what, what, um, what you kind of offer for sale, et cetera, the benefits of working with you. And then also if you could just quantify for us, if you're, um, domestic in the U S or if you do do international business as well. Okay. Yeah. So, um, basically if you go to doubleunderwonder.com, you can, um, design your own custom speed rope. And so that speed rope is the colors you want. You can mix and match colors, you can add designs to your handles, and then we also cut it to fit your height. Um, and so because of that, we have to have a pretty advanced um, interface to make all of those those ha- happen and have it be sent to your cart and have that be sent to um, to your order in ship station. And um, so, yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces to to it on the technology side. And then yeah, and the supply um, chain we, side. Yeah, right. So it, it's a, you know, like a lot of a lot of moving parts and like making sure we stay in stock on every single variant and all of those things is kind of difficult. You carry inventory then. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, it's an e-commerce store, but we're not like a drop shipping thing. We're not an, a, a, you know, a fulfilled by Amazon company. We actually build the jump ropes and stick them in the mail. So, cool. um, so yeah, the, there's, uh, you know, the physical piece and the, the e-commerce piece before I had a company that was all digital files, which feels awesome. You just, you know, you feel like you made money for just waking up and being you, mm-hmm. um, but, uh, th- this, you know, if you have a, have a bunch of great days, then, you know, you have some hard work to do at uh, the fulfillment office. So, um, and we do, we, um, concentrate on the U S we do ship to Canada cur- currently. Um, and then we've actually pulled back some of our international shipping just because lots of times things would just disappear when we sent them. Um, we would love to do more of that, but we haven't really found a rel- reliable way to do that. And so we end up just shipping things back and forth and then customers are disappointed because something doesn't show up. And uh, so we've kind of pulled back from that, actually. So mostly United States and Canada for now. If anyone in another country is listening and you want to set up a satellite office, we'd be totally open to that. But uh, for for now, we're just concentrating on uh, North America. So. so let me ask you this, if you wouldn't mind, Ian, are your customers direct to you or do you work through retailers in the areas as well? No, everything is direct because, you know, designing the jump rope is most of the fun. So, um, so we can't really send out a custom jump rope that's cut to fit your height and, um, patterns picked and all that, uh, to a a retailer. So we have to get people to show up to our site, which is, is kind of a hard thing, you know, um, just to, to get, to be visible and be in front of people all the time and continue to tell your story. But, uh, I, I would much, much rather do that than, um, just run a straight up Amazon company or something like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just my, my personality is such that I like to write. I like to speak to our audience. I like to generate content. So, so here's the $500 million question of the day. Has the Facebook, uh, Cambridge analytics situation affected your advertising on Facebook? You know, it has, um, Facebook, man, it is, you never quite know what you're going to get there. It's a box of chocolates. Come on. You do something that you've done before and it goes over great. And then sometimes you do something like, man, this is going to work so well for us and it fails miserably. So, um, that's a lot of trial and error, um, and a lot of educated guessing, Um, but we've, we've got some things going now that are still working pretty well and still generating quite a bit of traffic for us. Um, and so, I mean, for a while we would blog a lot and we could get clicks to our website for next to nothing. Sure. Um, 
but that that has not been as effective recently. Um, who knows whether it's the writing or the Facebook that's the problem there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so there's there's a lot of ways to still use Facebook, and um, we're still having success with it. So. Well, I'm going to add my, my 30 second disclaimer in this because I do happen to be an expert in advertising. I will say this, although Facebook has done something bad and the Cambridge Analytics situation is horrible, many of you will be surprised to find out that Facebook's business is advertising and that's what, that's how small businesses generate their income. So yeah. keep that in mind every time you think about Facebook because, um, we are all in this together and, um, same thing when you're, when you're on YouTube, uh, with the content and there's, if there's more of us looking for each other, the better we do. If there's less of us looking for each other, the worse it gets. So always keep that in mind is what I always say. Yeah. Totally. I mean, um, and for me, obviously there's, there's privacy issues and things like that, but I would much rather have an ad shown to me that makes sense for me than to have an ad shown to me that's just random or whatever. So, um, yeah, some of that, uh, I, I can understand. Well, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll have an opportunity to get in things not to look up and ways to stop the retargeting, but that's a topic for a different day. Um, so having said that, what are you, what, I mean, what made you decide to just, you know, start making customized jump ropes? I mean, wow. Talk about idea out of nowhere. That's so, amazing. Yeah. It seems out of nowhere, but it's kind of not like, um, so to start with, I, I'd been doing e-commerce before I even knew it was called e-commerce. Um, <laughs> before it was a thing. <laughs> yeah. So I, I've, my background is in radio and to be able to live where I wanted to live in radio, I started doing sound design and, um, sending basically weird sounds and music beds to other producers to use. Cool. So I'd been doing that for a really long time. Um, and, uh, having, you know, that's how I paid my bills. And then um, a company called Boulder Band Headbands started in our town, uh, which was a, an e-commerce company that won the 2013 Build a Business competition. So cool. they did a really great job, a really big deal, and um, especially for our small Colorado town. Um, and I got the opportunity to work for them and see all of the all of the things that were possible in the e-commerce world. So I had sort of a first row seat to that, and then I was also. I also started our town's, um, what became our town's first CrossFit gym. And so I was coaching CrossFit. And when you do that, you're always fixing somebody's jump rope and mixing and matching jump ropes and, uh, and making them, them work again, giving them new life. And so as I was doing that and had, uh, you know, this first row seat to the power of e-commerce for in, in a small town, um, I, I was thinking like, what could my wife and I do to, um, to just have a little bit of extra income. The whole thing was supposed to be something for her to do kind of. <laughs> and then, uh, it sort of grew legs and took over. And, uh, so I began to run this e-commerce company. Um, and th that became my focus as it grew. So, so, wow, that's an incredible story. I mean, talk about bringing a, a demand that's huge. You know, there are a lot of CrossFit, um, people, you know, the, uh, to be honest, my time, and, and I don't know if there's other, other people kind of in my age group in their mid thirties, I never joined, I've never joined a gym since I've been up in, in the mountain areas, right? Specifically, you know, in Salida, I've never joined a gym, but when I was in the, uh, foothills and in Denver, I was always part of a gym. And so now I kind of miss that. I think it's great that you have that going on over in, um, in uh, Canyon City, that's fantastic. And also, the jump rope thing is huge. Like, I'm five six, and I'm all legs. And you know what? To try to jump rope with a short jump rope is really funny when it's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and I would say our town has, I think, more CrossFit gyms per capita than any other town. I don't, I don't know if that's true. I haven't done any research, but we've got two CrossFit gyms in our town, and um, the high school has a CrossFit gym. Cool. Um, and then. In the neighboring town that's also in our county, Florence, Colorado, they've got a CrossFit gym and their high school has a CrossFit gym. So like pretty much everybody in our town is, you know, crazy fit. I'm kidding. But I mean, there's a lot of people doing it. So that's, that's fascinating. Um, I think it's so great that they're integrating it into the high school. So, um, let me ask you this in terms of, of your company, what are you most passionate about? What's kind of like your secret sauce that's kept you doing this? I know you kind of said that you weren't expecting this to be, um, a full-time job. It was just kind of a way to have a hobby, make some extra money, um, for you and your wife. And also having said that, do you have any, uh, employees or independent contractors at this point? 
Yeah. So um, I think the the thing with me that makes me the most passionate about doing what I'm doing um, is just to to see like how much um, functional fitness can change someone's life. Um, like we have people at our gym that have lost a hundred pounds. You know, wow. like that's, that's incredible. Like you've given somebody their, their life back and not their life back, but the, you've allowed them to experience their life in a way that, um, that is totally different and way healthier than anything they've ever experienced before. And so, um, if I can be just one little piece of that, if they, if I can send somebody a cool jump rope and that's the motivation they, they need to, um, keep going to the gym and keep trying these super hard, crazy things called double unders. Um, and it, and it contributes to their overall healthy lifestyle. That explains the name double unders. That's a move. Yes, it's a move. So one jump twice under your feet is a double under. Yeah. Cool. I knew that. I knew that when I was little. I knew that. that I, it's like I, it was just buried somewhere in like fourth grade jump rope for heart or something. It and, was. Yeah. It was totally buried. I knew that. I'm so sorry. I did not. That's okay. Um, so yeah. And then the other piece of your question was whether we have contractors. Um, and we, we do, we have some part-time employees that build jump ropes for us every once in a while when we get busy, my wife builds some jump ropes and then, um, we also employ a lot of, of people in our town that maybe we would, we would like we can't afford to have a, a full time photographer, but um, you know we can give our freelance photographer some time, and um, you know so we've we've got that. We've got um, Justin Far Designs. Um, he does all, all of our our web stuff. When I can't make something work, then he takes over and starts figuring out how to make it work, and he's brilliant. And um, if anyone out there needs a good web guy, Justin Farr, do that. Um, I may need to talk to Mr. Justin. Yeah, you definitely should. Um, so we've got, you know, we've got a few contractors. We also um, are. Uh, we have a girl that does our Instagram posting. Oh, cool. And she's perfect because she also owns a gym um, that is uh, is a functional fitness gym here in our town. And so she speaks the language and she totally gets the audience. And um, so, yeah, she has been doing a great job with that. And i um, trying to think of anybody else. Um, but, yeah, you know, we've got some part-time employees, some contractors, and, um, yeah, our we're generating income for those people. So that's another thing that's really cool is that, um, you know, a lot of times in, in a small town, especially most of our money goes other places, right? We online shop and we, um, support corporations that are, are in our area, but this is a way to funnel money back into your community. And so that's a, that's a cool thing. That's, that's phenomenal. And um, that, that definitely does this. So when you set out to stay here, um, was, were the gyms your goal as like a full-time job or did the company just kind of happen on accident just because it all fell together? Yeah. So the, the CrossFit gym portion of it, that was totally an accident. I, I wanted to do these, these really cool workouts and I wanted to have the equipment to do it. So I started working out with my friends and, um, that just, that grew into now we don't have enough equipment. So I bought some more equipment and I found an actual place for us to live and, uh, you know, our, our, for a gym to live. And it just got bigger and bigger until I realized, Oh crap, I now own a business. Right. And, um, so, and when that happened, I, uh, one of our, our customers made some suggestions about how I might improve the gym experience. And I'm like, those are great suggestions. You should buy this gym. <laughs> so I sold it to her and have never regretted it for a second. They've done an amazing job with it. And, um, uh, and I'm still a member there. I still coach there, but, uh, it, it was never really meant to be a, a business, but, um, this cool e-commerce business grew out of it. So I guess I did something right in there somewhere. So let me ask you this, um, if you were to, to take what you've done over the last, you know, 10 years and repeat it, would you stay in a rural, camp, a rural location? Absolutely. So, um, so as I said, I've been living in Canyon City since 1997. Um, and so I've got to see sort of the evolution of what's available by, um, by living in this rural 
um, location, right? So believe it or not, when I first, I think it was actually 98, sorry. Um, when I first moved to town, I literally had have done some of my business with a dial up internet connection from here. Right. Um, I, and then there was a time where I didn't have any internet. I would just do all my work and then go to town and upload it. Um, and, but now I've got to the, I've got internet that's fast enough at the house that I can stream Netflix and stuff like that. And then I'm literally seven minutes from the office that has 200 up and 200 down. So um, we really like have no limitations as far as technology goes now. Um, And I've always loved being in a small uh, community. I grew up in a town that was even smaller than this. I joke that it was like me and a horse for a while. Where was that? uh, Olathe, Colorado. Oh, wow. Where is that? It's between Montrose and Delta on the western slope of Colorado. Very small town, and I loved growing up there. Um, and so I never really wanted to live in a city, but I, I, because I was in radio, I lived in Denver, and I lived in Dallas for a while, um, and had the same sort of experience that you had. Like when I, when I came back from Dallas, I literally was tearing up as I was coming over Raton Pass because I'm like, what? I, I can't believe I took this for granted. How do I never take this for granted again? And so um, I love being able to, you know, go to the grocery store and know people and um, our kids, you know, know all their classmates and stuff, um, or at least who they are. It's big enough that they maybe don't run in the same circles with everybody like we did. I mean, at my high school, I think we graduated 23 people my senior year or something like that. So, um, so yeah, theirs is obviously bigger than that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I wanted them to have that sort of, um, smaller town experience and, um, to be able to live in the country and explore and do all those cool things. So, well, I think that's a great, a great, um, sound reasoning on that. That's well, and I, I would also mention that it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? Because we've got the P-TECH grant, which will allow them to get part of their college paid for if they go into a STEM, um, a STEM track at the high school. So like, they're not limited at all. They can live in this rural area and experience all that that has to offer, but still have really cutting edge um, technology education. So Anyway, so yeah, it's a it's a pretty sweet situation. So, uh, well, that is that's amazing, Ian. Why don't you, if you wouldn't mind, um, spending a few minutes talking about why you became a part of Tech Start in Fremont County and why you became? I think you're a partner with the Upper Arc Tech Sector, correct? Yeah. So. Um Brad Rowland, the director here at TechStart, uh, is w- one of my friends, and he's one of those people that you meet him and you're like, man, we should work together on something. He's a really cool guy. He's really smart, you know? And so nothing really kind of, there was nothing that made us work on anything together, but I just knew who he was and really, really admired him. And then, um, then this came up when I was looking, I was looking for office space and uh, um, it came out that they were doing this this tech project and I felt like I sort of loosely fit the description but um, Brad asked me if I wanted to be a part of it so uh, I think I was maybe the second person who signed a lease in this building um, and so it's it's been really awesome and I think the major reason for me to get involved is just what it is is doing in our um, in our high schools and for the youth in our community because um, they can get they can get free college through it all of these different programs that are that are at play and, um, and so I think that that's a pretty powerful thing and especially for me like I was I was a little rougher of a kid you know and and I didn't have the best grades in high school and so if I would have had something like this project when I was a kid, it would have changed my life dramatically. So that's that's why I was really excited about jumping on board and doing whatever I can do to um, make the, the the tech start project more visible and um, and help kids get um, get more options for their education. So. Well, I think I think those are honorable reasons to be a part of something, and you know, I think. Much like you, you know, my biggest concern in this technical, and I call this a technical revolution that we're seeing, the technology is changing so fast. The, the, the use cases of what we can do and what we can't do is changing so quickly. And when you bring mass adoption of a technology into any community, into any lifestyle, to any people, if you're not willing to um, be the doers that show people how to use it, it, it really puts us in a, in a unique time because sometimes people aren't even given any time 
to understand what it is they're doing, what this new technology brings. They don't understand how it works. They don't understand why they need it. And so it almost becomes a fearful thing in a smaller density crowd because there is no lens. And I, I'm not picking on small towns. I'm just saying it's a smaller group of people. When it's a smaller group of people and you're not supporting them in learning, about the technology, about what it can do for you, um, about how it can make your life easier, you know, things to do, things not to do. Where are people supposed to get that support these days? Right? Yeah. It's, right. It's, so this homegrown approach to bringing education on how to use this, how to grow your business online, how to, how to even think about the fact that you have an online persona is so powerful in a smaller town like this. And there's Henry talking. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I would agree, and um, I think that there's a lot of um, of people that, like you said, could benefit greatly by doing some really small things, um, like in Facebook marketing, things like that, um, on a local level where you can really sort of own the market with a really small budget. Um, don't get me started about marketing, but um, but yeah, it's a uh, it, it's something that's really powerful, and I feel like it, the story needs to be told to, in these smaller communities of of what's available for them. So it it definitely does. I think it, and I think it's uh, more than anything, it's a uniting factor. It's not some boring tech class. I you know people always get afraid, but it's not. This is our life now, and you know that's one of the reasons that we have have are you know working so hard on this partnership with all of us in between all all of our communities i think as a custodian of of doing that i think i i think for me and i think for you the biggest two reasons that we want to bring this to fruition is that if you're in business you are in technology anymore if you are um if you want to communicate with the other parts of the world it's beyond just a pen and paper anymore. And you can't always just walk across the street when you're thinking of what technology has done for a smaller community. It gives us the ability to be national and it also gives us the ab ability to be global. And what happens, I think, with small businesses, they grow really fast in a small town. And then when they get to that next step, there's no one technologically to kind of guide that. So that's what this partnership's about is, um, you know, finding that support. Would you agree? Yeah, totally. Um, and there's there's so many opportunities that people don't really think about um, how you know how they could possibly take their their store from a brick and mortar to a click and mortar, right? And like how you could how you could really expand your business. And then again, we've got businesses that are funneling more money into our local communities, and uh, and then we're able to do more things. So yeah, like I couldn't agree more. There's so much opportunity. And I think the, the hard thing is finding people to buy into that. And so um, it's, it's, a really, it's really hard to sell the dream to people if they're in like a fixed mindset of this is how things work. But I'm noticing that that's slowly changing. So Well, listen, Ian, are there any other thoughts you have on um, Living Rural or the technology partnership or anything else you want to share about Double Under Wonder? Did I do, I do, did I do it right that time? You did it right that time. Good job. Um, so nothing, nothing specific other than, um, I guess there's also the other side of the message, right? Like there's not, um, it's not just that there's opportunity for people who live in small towns. There's also opportunity for people who are, um, having the life sucked out of them in large towns to, um, live in a rural area if that's something that that's interesting to them. Um, I mean, like I told you, I lived in, in Dallas for a while and spent m much of my life in traffic and, um, you know, it, it was a pretty miserable experience for me, um, having been used to all the things that a, that a small Colorado town can afford. And so, um, so I think that uh, whoever's listening to this and, and you live in a, a big city, um, but you it's really not your speed and you would sort of love to be in a different rhythm of life, um, that there's, there's more opportunity in a small town to work remotely or start a small business um, than ever before. So don't, don't feel trapped. Um, you could probably cash in some of your chips and uh, find a pretty, pretty decently priced house here and live a much different life. Um, it's, I mean, and it isn't for everyone, but it's for a lot more people than people realize. So I guess that's the other thing I would add. Um, I will tell you, as a professional, I got pushed back from my colleagues because they weren't remote workers, but I lucked out and the company I was working for said, 
okay, Ashley, go fly, you know? And it was like being dropped in the middle of the Pacific Ocean without a life vest and swimming for miles. But what I can say about what this community has done for me and about what the quality of the air and the cleanness of the area and the mountains and just knowing that I can walk out my front door and go actually climb a mountain makes it so much easier to deal with the trials and tribulations of the business. It's just becomes, it, it, it kind of, you realize how much energy you wasted on, on not focusing on the best version of yourself that you could be. And I mean that professionally, I mean it personally as well. But when you're up here, you think about both. And that's really important. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. All right, Ian. Well, thank you so much. And please, everybody, feel free to check out Ian's website at www.doubleunderwonder.com. You got it. I got it? All yeah, right. Yeah, you got it. We look forward <laughs> to um, talking to you soon, Ian. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Techstart Podcast. Find out more at techstart.fremontedc.com.